process of cybersecurity emergency response. So what you can see over here is actually the uh, flow process of handling the uh, cybersecurity emergency response, where firstly, we would examine that whether the security incident, whether they take place. If yes, then we have to report the incident response level according to their uh, severity level. Then we have to find out whether we have the emergency response plans. If the plans does not uh, available, then we will actually need to try to suppress the incidents to prevent the uh, damage expanding. And we will try to resolve the incident if possible and restore these systems in order to make sure that the information that we have is uh, protected safely. So regardless, whichever process that uh, the uh, cybersecurity emergency response have, basically we also need to uh, evaluate our loss due to the incidents and create a report to uh, tabulate the incidents that occurs in order to, uh, uh, to make sure the user aware about the incidents. So the cybersecurity emergency response is actually very important because they are used in tracing, handling and preventing the emergency of the uh, cybersecurity incidents. So basically now it includes the uh, preparations, detections, suspensions, incident resolving, recovery and the conclusions. Now let's see uh, all these uh, cyber security emergency response that we have. Firstly, preparation. So preparation is a um, step whereby they assess the potential security incidents and try to come out with the corresponding policy and assurance measures to suppress and resolve security incidents. So when we talk about preparations, uh, firstly, we have to know about our asset because our asset risk is uh, required for us to perform an analysis to identify the information system network and architectures, as well as the uh, management personnel and who are the uh, whichever dark system protection is required, as well as to calculate the loss. Then we also have the uh, security hardening, which is more to uh, enhancing the uh, defense systems. And then we have the emergency response plan preparations, which is a uh, step-by-step -step procedure as well as guidelines on uh, a response plan required. Then we also need to uh, establish the uh, emergency response team, whereby there will be a specialized team that will uh, handle the process whenever incident occur. Then um, the assurance of the resources that we acquired, which is something that has to do with the uh, uh, make sure making sure the uh, resource that we have is all the time uh, available. And finally, a technical support library is required that has to do with the uh, environment, the systems, as well as the uh, user manuals. Next, we see the detections. So detection is actually uh, for the purpose to identify and detect various security emergency incidents. So. Uh, if let's say we have found out the uh, incidents, then we basically need to classify them based on their impact as well as the uh, warning level 
and then we really have to report the incident, the incidents as well. So uh, detection itself, it could be uh, something that we do need to do all the time and proactively. So for the proactive uh, uh, detections, basically it is a routine operation and maintenance for monitoring purpose. Example, we can check the alarms, we check the system running status, and we also can check the logs. Then we also have the uh, security incident judgments, which is something has to do with the um, impacts of security incidents, as well as the loss caused by the incidents. Then lastly, we have to tablets all the security incidents according to the types and severity levels and uh, response to, uh, from the uh, emergency response team. Suspensions restrict the scope of attacks and limit potential loss and damage. If an emergency incident is detected, start the emergency response process to minimize the impact of the incident. So what you can see over here are the uh, action taken for the uh, suspicions. Firstly, we have the uh, prevention of incident spread, whereby we have to conduct preliminary analysis and work out a proper suspicion method. So this is for us to isolate the uh, damage from further spreading to other systems. Next, block attack launch to minimize the impact. So blocking the attack launch could be actually handled from uh, the uh, firewall or the router itself. We can probably um, perform some sort of blacklist or even uh, filterings to a certain targets or certain attacks. Then uh, the next steps under the suspension will be uh, performing the suspensions by taking the uh, technical measures to handle the security incidents. And then we set the isolation area, summarize data information as well as to estimate the loss. And lastly, we have the suspensions monitoring. So after we uh, perform the suspensions, then we need to counter check whether the suspension uh, is working successfully. So we actually need to analyze what is the reason behind the incidents so that we can actually uh, perform a documentation for future reference. Next, we see the incident resolving. So after we perform this suspension, so we need to know how to resolve the uh, incidents. Then locate the root cause to resolve the incident. So we need to find out how actually we can uh, solve this issue. Example, cause location could be due to um, malware. Okay, so we have to locate the viruses, Trojan horse, the uh, adware, so far so forth. And we also can identify the intrusion's behavior and locate how what are the uh, unauthorized access to the systems and check for the uh, patchings on our system in case there is a system vulnerability. Then for the repair and hardening, we basically need to update the system if let's say we uh, found that it's a vulnerability. Then update the uh, security policy to uh, keep it up to date to the current technologies and we also need to perform the security audits so that we can actually keep on uh, monitoring and counter check the uh, defense that we have in the system then finally for the summary and publicity we need to analyze the causes behind the incidents and strengthen the publicity next let's check the uh, recovery. So re recovery basically means that we need to uh, make sure anything that is affected will be recovered. So basically, 
it will refer to the restoring of all the compromised system, applications, databases, and network devices to normal status. So things that we could perform under recovery. Example, restore the network device configurations. So let's say uh, if we wanted to do this, we need to make sure that we have performed the backup process previously. Then we also can perform a restoring of data or systems, backup all the changes, as well as to check the running status of a device that recover. This will be on a hardware level. And to check whether the isolation measures work. So this is actually on the suppressions. Okay. So remove the isolation measures or short term suppression defense measure if the slide situation improve. So this is an um, example of what we can do in the recovery steps. So after the uh, step just now where we actually have the um, preparations, detections, suspensions, and incident resolving, then we should actually learn a lesson from any sort of incident that occurs. So based on that, we need to summarize uh, information about this incident. So in this case, we need to perform the uh, reports, okay, after we already investigate the issue of the incidents. Firstly, we have the uh, emergency response report, which is meant to uh, meant to record down step by step procedure on how we handle the security incidents. Then we also need the uh, emergency response team leaders to deliver the emergency response completion commands. Then record them again in the report. Next. The investigations of the security incidents shall be recorded as well, as this will help to um, discover the causes behind the incidents, as well as to uh, calculate the loss based uh, from this particular incident and, and the impact of this incident towards the company or the organizations. Then lastly, uh, the thing that we got to do in order for us to uh, resolve the incidents. So we have to come up with an emergency response summary. Example, we can actually strengthen our security and evaluate the executions of emergency response plan. If let's say the plan does not meet up to the uh, incidents, we have to come up with the uh, better plans, okay, improvise our current emergency response plans and appraise the members of emergency response organizations. So everyone in the organization should actually take a responsibility towards the incidents. Now let's see the uh, new trend on the cybersecurity emergency response. Okay, so let's see on the global uh, major security incidents. The IoT, mobile internet, cloud computing, and big data are what happenings right now. Emerging technologies are reshaping the world, but in accordance to this, cybersecurity incident will be on the rise. Okay, increase, which will increase the people concerned about cyber safety. So over here, what you can see is some of the um, history of the uh, global major security incident. Example, in the uh, United States presidential elections in November 2016, it was found that thousands of personal emails from the presidential candidates were disclosed by hacker. Then the United States Senate Intelligence Committee has confirmed that the Russian has interfered in the 2016 election. So apart from that, um, the November 8th of 2017. So that is a um, driverless shuttle bus, which was in Las Vegas, United States. So um, it seems that the driverless shuttle bus have detected an obstacles in front of the bus, but the bus did not stop, which causing it to collide with the truck in the end. 
So this may actually due to the uh, security incidents happens to the systems. Then um, on 12 May 2017, we have the uh, WannaCry ransomware, the outbreaks exploiting the uh, Microsoft operating system vulnerability. Then uh, this particular WannaCry affecting at least 300,000 of users across 150 countries and resulting about a total loss of uh, 8 billion United States dollars. Then in March 2018, it's reported that the Cambridge Analytica has collected 50 million Facebook user profile without uh, the acknowledgement from the user and conducted targeted publicity in the US elections in 2016. So you can see that all these um, security incidents not only happens uh, in our environment, they also happens worldwide, regardless on the level of the uh, environment. Next, let's see the uh, laws and regulations that has been applied for cyber security. So uh, over here, uh, we can see that in year 2017, the global pilot project is more mostly focusing on the cybersecurity laws and regulations. So uh, they are mainly uh, targeted to the critical infrastructures, personal data security, and cyber emergency response. So come country example like United Kingdom and Germany, they actually introduced uh, several security assurance regulations uh, on autonomous driving. Example, uh, in United Kingdom, so it says that the core internet and automobile security principles have enforced cyber security responsibility on each stakeholder of automobile supply chains. So they actually require the organizations of the uh, automobile to fulfill to certain um, rules and regulations to protect any sort of uh, incident that might occur in future. So um, then in Germany, they basically uh, deploy the attack codes for autonomous vehicles and to, to give a clear guidelines of the controversial automated driving ethics. Example over here, in Germany, uh, the ethic codes prohibits programming to dilemmas when they will be reliable for the uh, damages caused by the automation system and products. So this is uh, the kind of effort that uh, we should actually deploy in cyber securities. Okay, then um, for the most infamous WannaCry ransomware that happens uh, in year 2017, basically it is actually another wake up call to uh, the community around the world because ransomware is somewhat difficult to be uh, monitored. So the system itself might have difficulty to alert. So this actually cause our global security incidents. So in this case, the um, most of the country tend to be more proactive, okay, than when it comes to uh, security incidents. So United States and Belgium, as well as the others, have departed from the existing emergency response mechanism. Okay, so example, the approach they have done, uh, firstly, abandon the outdated approach, then focus on the emergency response on three aspects, which is firstly, asset response, threat response, and intelligence support. Then they also say the relevant response personnel can take actions at the same time. And for Belgium, basically it says that um, the cyber attacks are inevitable, which means that um, we actually need to all the time alert and aware to the potential attacks. So when a cyber attacks occur, we can actually come, uh, come out with a good emergency incidents plans to minimize the damage. And 
also to list out the network infrastructures and internet information service applications that are probably compromised. Okay, so we come into the um, final of the uh, topics. So here we have some of the quiz. Firstly, which of the following is not included in the PDRR model? So PDRR model is actually only includes protections, detections, recovery, and response. And that is the legacy model. The new model is MPDRR, which add on management. So in the legacy model, we do not have management. Question number two, which of the following is not a cyber security incident category? So we basically has a multiple category. So um, we classify them based on the seriousness, the ordinary, the relative serious, but not the special incident. So that's pretty much the uh, topics.